their mental afflictions, even kill their own dear selves, then what surprise could it ever be to see that they also act in ways that harm the bodies of other people? So he's saying, like, if there are people in the world who are so misguided that they would even hurt themselves through their actions, what surprise is it that they would hurt you? What surprise is it that they're going to hurt you? And, and so what, what does he mean by people who are hurting themselves through their actions? People who are hurting you are hurting themselves through their actions. They will pay for it. They will suffer. When you hurt others, hurt comes to you. That's a truism. That's a cosmic truism. So if you want harm to stop causing, coming to you, how do you stop that? How do you break the cycle? In, 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 in Indian they say, ahimsa, non-violence. If you want to stop violence, you've got to be non-violent. You have to stop the cycle that brought you violence in the first place. So, so people who don't understand that and are harming you are just committing kind of a suicide. They're just slashing their own wrists. Every time they harm you, they're slashing their own wrists. They're assuring that harm come, comes to them. So if they're, if they're so clueless about how the world is working that they would even hurt themselves by hurting you, why should you be surprised that they're hurting you? See? Yeah. So what would be the proper response to somebody who's hurting themselves? By hurting them? Have some compassion for them. Have some compassion for them. They're hurting themselves. They're, they will suffer. They are suffering already. People who harm others are not happy. Okay? Happy people don't hurt others, as, as, at least intentionally. They would never hurt us because it, yeah, it wouldn't occur to a happy person to hurt somebody else. People hurt others when they're unhappy. So they have some compassion for them in the moment and then think about their future. People, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're going to exercise compassion, you know, in addition to having compassion for the people who are harmed by 9-11, what about the people who ran the planes into the buildings? They're really going to suffer. They're really going to suffer, suffering in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. So have some compassion for them too. Out of great, great ignorance, they, cre they created some massive bad karma for themselves for the future. Great ignorance, great delusion to do something like that. So have some compassion for the people who are perpetrating the violence, as well as the people who are victimized by the violence. Both. Both. In a way, if you had to choose, which one would be more deserving of your compassion, actually, you see? The victims, of, the victims of violence, you know, death comes from past causes that have not flowered and now are over, you see? But the person who's perpetuating the violence is creating new causes for, for, for very serious suffering in the future for themselves. It is like the very... So now he says, so, so when, a, when a, a person harms you, you have two choices. You can have two assumptions about, about who they are. You can say, well, they're, uh, they're, uh, <coughs> they're naturally harmful. They're naturally harmful. They're harmful by nature. Or they're nice, they're a good person by nature, and they're just, in this case, just made a mistake. One of two, two reasons. And it's a, in either case, it's wrong to be angry with them. All right, so we'll look at it. Uh, if it is the very nature of those who are children, who are like childlike in their, in their intelligence, especially their spiritual intelligence, if it's their very nature to, to do harm to others, then being angry with them is wrong. It's as wrong as hating fire for the fact that it burns. They can't help it. If it's their nature to be harmful, how can, how, why should you get angry at them? They can't help themselves. It's like getting angry at fire for burning. Then, what if it's not their nature? And if the nature of living beings is to be thoughtful, then all their faults are occasional. If it's the nature of their beings, of this being to be a good person, then the, the harm that they've created is just an accident. It's just a mistake. And if you ever made a mistake? You see, we all like to think of ourselves as good people. And then we go, you know, we're very, very good mostly at forgiving ourselves. See, we, we, we don't even have to go so far as to forgive. We justify ourselves before we need to forgive ourselves. So, you know, forgiveness requires that, you know, you, you sort of say, well, you know, some, there's something there to forgive. But most of us don't even get that far. So, no, no, I, you know, I have to do that. It was, you know, blah, 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 blah. We're our own, like, best judge, jury, and lawyer. You see? 
we get ourselves off on technicalities all the time. <laughs> Temporary insanity and nothing else. <laughs> but when it comes to you know forgiving others, we're not so good at it, are we? By the way, uh, we in this culture have had have a great, great example, a great para paragon of forgiveness in our culture. There was a guy a long time ago who was completely betrayed by his by his uh, people, by the by the by the society he lived in. Completely betrayed, completely nailed onto a cross to die in the most horrendous, long, lasting way possible. And and what did he say as he's sitting there suffering on the cross as a result of the betrayal of all his, all his friends and you know people? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They're, they're ignorant. They're like children. They're like the verse that we just read. They're like children. How can how can we hold them really responsible? They're so ignorant. You see, forgive them. Jesus didn't rise from the grave with a grudge. He forgave you, you see. And you could argue that that's how he rose from the grave. If you believe in, you know, if you believe in the resurrection, he rose from the grave because he forgave you. So, I kind of like skip into the last. I want to talk about, you know, at the, at the end here, uh, about imitating people like Jesus. We're not quite at the end yet, though. <laughs> If the stick or whatever that delivers, if it is the stick or whatever that delivers directly, if you're angry at what impels it, then get mad if you really must in anger itself, since it's the force that sees the other into motion. This is a very interesting verse. Here's what it means. If you wanted to get angry, if somebody hit you with a stick, let's say, if you wanted to get angry, why not get angry at the stick? The stick is what brings you pain, isn't it? So, no, yeah, but it's an inanimate object. It's like that car that I, you know, smash my fingers in. I'm not going to get angry at the stick. I'm going to get angry at the person who wields the stick, right? That's okay then, right? And he's saying, well, what's wielding the person that's wielding the stick? See, that person is just kind of like a stick who's being wielded by another force, which is what? Anger, anger itself. So if you want to get angry at something, get angry, get angry at anger. Get angry at the anger that brought you the person, brought you the, you know, the person who's impelled by anger and wields a stick and hits you. Get angry at the anger. And get angry at anger no matter whose body it's in. Yours or the other person's. You see? That's a very interesting verse. That's another like refrigerator. That one's a refrigerator magnet one that you have to like sit there kind of like <laughs> work at a little bit. I myself, in days gone by, perpetuated this very harm on other living beings. How the hell did I get a person like this in the first place? I must have done something like this in the past. Okay? So, so it's right, it's just, that now the one who did the harm, myself, should have this hurt come to him. That's a little hard, right? It's, it's very hard to take responsibility for ourselves. But I suggest to you that it's the beginning of a spiritual life. The beginning of a spiritual path is to take responsibility for yourself and stop blaming other people for your problems. Your problems have come to you by your own actions only. And, and, and another way to forgive them, see, that they in a way are just the delivery system of your own, for your own harm. They're like the UPS truck that drove up to your front door and said, you know, ding dong, there's a package for Ms. News or whatever, see. They're just a delivery system for your own time. So why would you get angry? If you understood that, if you understood that, see, why would we ever get angry? 